In Modo, just as in real life, it's sometimes useful to know if you are inside or outside. In this tutorial, we'll address that very question. I've been asked a few times by loyal watchers whether it is possible to create a rig that determines whether a point lies inside or outside of a complex surface. My answer was usually that I was not aware of such a thing, nor indeed did I know how to do it. With the advent of the procedural modelling system, however, I noticed that there was an assembly called Select by Volume. This selects geometry which lies inside a mesh. It turns out that this is just an ordinary assembly. Surely it must contain some secret wizardry unavailable to us mere mortals. Finally, I found time to dig deeper. And it turns out that there is no secret source, just a bit of cunning and some detailed knowledge of how the intersect constraint works. So let's start with a blank sheet and create some geometry. Something simple to start with. I'll also create a locator to act as a probe. Let's move it somewhere convenient. Sort things out. Now let's create a surface intersection constraint. You'll find that here under modifiers. If we select first the locator and then the mesh and then we will pick intersect surface. Now immediately you'll see that something magic has happened. A new locator has been created automatically for us and that is positioned at the closest position to the probe locator. If I move the probe locator then the hit point moves accordingly. Notice that if I move the probe locator inside the cube we still get a nearest hit on the surface of the cube, even though we're inside of the cube. Also notice that the orientation of the locator makes no difference. It simply calculates the nearest point to our probe locator. And it's interesting to look at what this has created for us in the schematic. So let's take our probe locator, drag that in, and you'll see that the probe locator's world position and world rotation have been fed into the intersection constraint node. The cube mesh is fed, also fed into the intersection node and the cube mesh's position, rotation and scale have been composed together to give a combined transformation which is another input to the intersection. So the transform input at the top is the position of our target mesh. Transform input 2 is the position of our probe. And transform input 3 is the rotation of our probe. But as I said earlier, the rotation when we're in the closest mode doesn't make any difference. Let's have a look and see the parameters to the intersection node. And we notice that it says closest here. The intersection produces an output which is the position of the closest point and Modo has kindly created a locator for us just to indicate where that point is. It also outputs a distance. If I hover over that you can see that we're currently 529 millimeters away from the surface. If I select it and move it then the output has changed to 1.014 meters. OK, so that is the closest mode for the intersection constraint. What about the other modes? Well, there is only one other mode, and that is Ray. What does Ray do? Well, on the face of it, nothing at all. But what Ray does is it casts a ray from the locator along the specified axis. So in, the, in this case, a ray is being shot from this position, the 
position of the locator in the Z direction, in the direction of the blue line. And that's not going to hit anything. So if I rotate our locator, at some point we should start getting an intersection with the surface. And there you go. Marvellous. But what happens if we move the locator inside the surface? Oh, look at that. We're not getting any intersection. The distance output is zero, and this second locator is coincident with the, the probe locator. Now that is interesting because the behavior of intersect in closest mode is different to the behavior of intersect in ray mode. And that gives us a handle on determining whether we're inside or outside of a surface. Let's reset everything and put our intersection mode back to closest. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the closest point from this locator, our probe locator. Once we've found that closest point, we're going to construct a ray from that locator pointing towards the intersection point. When we're outside of the surface, that ray will hit at the same distance as our original intersection calculated in closest mode. However, if we're inside of the mesh, then we'll have a closest point and we construct a ray from the locator to the closest point, but because it's inside, it's not going to hit the surface. The distance delivered by the second intersection will be different to the distance delivered by the first intersection. Well, OK, I've explained what we're going to do. Let's put it all into action. Let's make a bit more room for our schematic. And for some reason I've lost the name of that node. So let's disconnect our the rotation there because we don't need it. I think we'll keep this locator and just to make it easier, let's rename the locators and call this one probe. Okay, and call this one closest hit. And I'm going to change the way that I render the probe locator so that we can see what direction it's pointing in a bit more easily. So let's change the shape to something which is directional. So maybe a cylinder, no, maybe a cone. So the cone is pointing along the z-axis uh, and that indicates which direction the locator is pointing in. It's a bit big at the moment, so let's adjust the size smaller. There we go. That's not looking too shabby. OK, so what we've done, we have found the closest point to this locator. We now want to point this locator at this intersection point. And we can do that using another sort of constraint, and that is the direction constraint. So we want to constrain this locator, the probe, to point towards the closest hit locator. And here we have the direction constraint. And as if by magic, our locator is now pointing at that intersection point. It's interesting to see what happens when we move it. If we move the locator, you can see how it always points at the intersection, at the hit point. So now we can cast a ray from our probe in the direction indicated and using ray mode and see whether or not we hit the surface at the same distance as the original intersection. 
is our direction constraint. So our intersection goes from the probe to the surface. And we want to put it into ray mode. This will have created us another locator. And well, what should we call this? We call this locator ray hit. So the proof of the pudding is now in the eating. We should be able to now determine whether or not we are inside or outside of the surface by comparing the distances between these two hits. So when we're outside of the surface, we should expect the distances to be the same. Distance output here, 624 millimeters, and here, 624 millimeters. But if we move inside the surface, distance here is 375 millimeters, the distance between this locator and the surface of the cube, and here the distance is naught because it hasn't found an intersection. Now we could just look at this distance here, this distance naught, and say, oh, if the distance is zero, then we haven't found an intersection, we must be inside. But what would happen if there was a piece of geometry above here? The ray would go straight through the top, and it would hit the geometry above it. And then we would have an intersection, it just wouldn't be with this top point here, it would be with some other geometry. So I think the best thing to do is to count, compare these two distances and see if they're equal. So if they're equal, then we're outside. So maybe not equal would be better. So if distance 1 is not equal to distance 2, then we should be inside. So this should say true, and it does. It says true. I'm always amazed when these things work. We won't be needing that channel. And just to show this is actually working, we can use this to modify something to tell us whether we're inside or outside. So the thing I did earlier was to take the probe and modify its solid parameter, which determines whether the locator is drawn solid or not. Let's separate that channel off so it's easier to see what's going on. Stick the result into there. It's a bit difficult to see whether it's being drawn solid because the colour is not very easy to see, so we'll need to change its colour. There we go. So now it's being drawn solid when it's inside and wireframe when it's outside. Miraculous. Right, this is a bit of a mess. We can tidy it up and make it easier to see what's connected to what, and maybe disconnect a few things and move them around so that there aren't too many crossing overs, but basically that's it. We now have an arrangement that tells us whether or not we are inside a surface. And the surface can be as complicated as we like. We can add some more geometry into this scene. Let's add torus, for example. So we're outside, 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 but inside. Inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, inside, outside. It works like a dream. 
OK, that'll do for this episode. In the next lecture, I will take this rig and create a reusable assembly from it. Then I'll show some examples of it in action. If you found this video useful, then check out my other videos on the Modo particle system and do the old subscribe like thing if you feel so inclined. In any case, thanks for watching and see you next time.